So in this video, we're going to talk about the Fermi inversion factor. Fermi inversion factor. And what is this and why do we care about it? Uh, well, in the previous videos, we derived an expression for the absorption spectra as a function of the photon energy. We said there was just this material parameter, AP, multiplied by our density of states, our reduced density of states as a function of the photon energy, divided by the photon energy. And in previous videos, I have expressions for AP, density of states, uh, and, well, photon energy is just the photon energy. Um, but we've been assuming, so there's been a, a big assumption up to this point, uh, that in our band structure, so in our band structure, we've always been assuming that if I send in some radiation, so I send in radiation at a specific energy, or specific frequency, and there's an electron in this uh, valence band, then it just makes a transition. So it transitions where this is the energy h bar omega from the valence band, so our valence band, to the conduction band. So it is able to transition. But we've been assuming that there is an electron here. So there is an electron here. And similarly, we've been assuming that there's an empty state here. Uh, but in general, that's, that's not going to be the case, right? These uh, states have some probability of being filled or some probability of being empty. And so we need to multiply our initial absorption spectra by, the, by some probability. And so I'm going to call this initial absorption spectra A0 as a function of our photon energy. And so our actual absorption coefficient uh, is just going to be this A0 term uh, multiplied by the probability that there is an electron here. So the probability that, uh, so let's call this energy one and let's call this energy two. So this is our analogous to our two level system, E2 and E1. Uh, so we need state one to be filled. So the probability that state one is filled and we need state two to be empty. So probability state two to be empty. And what are these probabilities? How do we calculate them? Uh, well, all we need to use is the Fermi factor. So electrons are fermions, and this is a statistical uh, system because it's a very large piece of semiconductor, presumably, uh, an absurd number of atoms on the order of 10 to the 23. And so this is just our Fermi factor uh, evaluated at energy E1, and this is our Fermi factor evaluated at energy E2. Uh, now there's one, there's a couple caveats here. Uh, and that has to do with the quasi, uh, so the quasi Fermi levels. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll leave that aside for, for just now. So the Fermi factor uh, at E1 is just equal, we can write down an expression for it. We know it's just one to the, uh, one over one plus E to the E1 minus EF uh, over KT. But, uh, if in general, if we're not in equilibrium, so if we don't have, uh, if we're pumping uh, this semiconductor, so if we're injecting light into it, then this uh, Fermi energy needs to be replaced with our valence band Fermi energy or our, our whole Fermi energy. And so we're gonna call this whole term, uh, instead of F, we're just gonna call this FV. And so when I write FV, uh, this is what I mean. And we haven't said what this energy E1 is. Presumably it's going to depend on the photon energy, but we can figure that out. Uh, and similarly, we the probability that state 2 is empty is just 1 minus, instead of FV now, we have FC, uh, where FC is just equal to the same exact thing, uh, but evaluated at energy E2 instead of E1, and we're subtracting the Fermi energy of our conduction band. Uh, instead of the Fermi energy for our valence band. So our overall absorption coefficient now, alpha as a function of our photon energy, is just what we calculated previously using the density of states and our area parameter, uh, times Fv times 1 minus Fc. And these Fvs and Fcs uh, are also functions of photon energy. And what exactly that, that function is, uh, will depend on what E2 and E1 are, and we'll go over that in, in the future. But now you might notice that we have another problem. So we've only been assuming that transitions can occur from our valence band 
to our conduction band. But if we happen to have an electron in the conduction band, and we sent in light of the appropriate frequency, we could actually have stimulated emission of this electron down to the valence band. Now, we'd need an empty state, so we'd need a hole here. Uh, we'd need an empty state in the valence band. And we need a filled state here in the conduction band. And that might seem unlikely, uh, at least at, uh, at equilibrium, but it could happen, especially if we're, uh, we're pumping this semiconductor with a lot of external light. Uh, and so we need to add a term for stimulated emission. So our total absorption coefficient uh, is going to have to take into account both our absorption process, so I've called this just previously alpha, uh, minus the uh, absorption coefficient that has to do with stimulated emission. And so now this uh, absorption coefficient that we talked about previously, this is due to our process of absorption. Uh, and we can calculate uh, a stimulated emission absorption coefficient just as we calculated the absorption coefficient. Uh, and it's going to be exactly the same thing. So it's going to be, it's going to have the same magnitude but now, instead of the probability of this bottom state being filled, this bottom state has to be empty. So we've got 1 minus Fv. And similarly, this top state has to be filled. So we multiply this by Fc. Or sorry, not, uh, not Fv, Fc. And the reason these two have the same prefactor out front, the same magnitude, uh, this we got from Fermi's golden rule. So Fermi's golden rule which was uh, sort of a mind-blowing experiment in, in physics, uh, or a mind-blowing process in, in physics. And so we can calculate our total absorption coefficient. It's just the thing that we've been dealing with so far, alpha naught, multiplied by now. Uh, if you subtract these all these Fermi factor terms, uh, you'll just get Fv minus Fc, because it's just Fv times 1 minus Fc minus 1 minus Fv times Fc. So this is now our total absorption coefficient as a function of the photon energy. And this, on the right-hand side, this quantity right here is known as the Fermi inversion factor. So the Fermi inversion factor. And why is it known as the Fermi inversion factor? Why do we call it that? Um, well, remember that I said once upon a time that our absorption coefficient can be negative. So this can be negative, and this is how we get lasers. This is how we get gain. And so if this Fermi inversion factor is negative, so in other words, if Fv is less than Fc, then this total absorption will also be negative because this alpha naught term out front, this is a positive real number. And so typically at equilibrium, we probably expect uh, so we probably expect most of our valence band states to be filled with electrons. Uh, if we're not doing anything interesting to the semiconductor, we expect most of our valence band states to be filled with electrons, and maybe we've got some holes here and there. So maybe we've got a hole here and there. And similarly, we expect our conduction band, we expect our conduction band, if we're not doing anything to it, it's probably going to have mostly empty states. So it's probably going to have mostly empty states and maybe a few electrons. Uh, a few electrons which contribute to conduction very near the band edge. And so this is the case uh, where Fv is approximately 1, because all of our states uh, in the conduction band, or in the valence band, have a very high probability of being filled. And similarly, our uh, states in the conduction band have a very high probability of being empty. So Fc is approximately 0. And so this is just the case we've been dealing with up to this point, where we have just alpha naught, where we don't have to worry about the Fermi factor. But if something happens like we've got a bunch of electrons, uh, instead we've got a bunch of electrons in our conduction band, and a ton of holes, uh, a ton of holes in our valence band, and this might happen when we're artificially exciting this semiconductor with a bunch of photons, uh, then in this case we've actually got our states in the valence band are very likely to be empty. So Fv is going to be likely 0, and Fc is going to be approximately 1 for all the energies that we're interested in. 
And now our absorption is going to be negative because FV minus FC will be approximately negative 1. And so in the next couple of videos, we just need to figure out FC and FV. We need to figure out their dependence on the photon energy. So we want to put the energy E1 and E2 uh, in terms of the photon energy. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post those down below in the comments section, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.